Our next shortlisted author is G.J. Ogden, author of Forsaken Commander, which is the first in a series described as an epic blend of space opera and militaristic sci-fi. So please welcome Gareth. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. It's very nice to be here. Um, congratulations. Um, please introduce yourself as, as per the other authors and tell us a little bit about Forsaken Commander. Okay, so so my name's Gareth, but I write as GJ Ogden. Uh, I've been an indie sci-fi author since 2018. Uh, 39 published novels now, uh, across eight series. I've got four in pre-order as well on, on Amazon KDP, of course. Uh, and I'm very happy to be representing science fiction in this contest. I think that's great to, to see sort of pew pew spaceships and so on in the in the running as well. So yeah, so my so my book's Forsaken Commander. You can see that. So part of the Eternian Wars series. It's book one in the Eternian Wars series. And uh in essence, it's a story about a, an old soldier, uh, an augmented super soldier in, in the case of this book, um, who, who won a bit of war against a, a post-human faction of humanity called the Eternians. Um then when he was no longer needed, they sort of cast him aside and forgot about him, hence the sort of name of the book. Um, so then when we meet Rose, he's kind of been living alone for, for decades because he, you know, he doesn't age um, and just growing bitter and resentful until he's, he's tracked down by a, another officer who sort of explains that his, his old enemy is back and this is this is 100 years later. Um and you know, asks for his help, asks him to come back. And obviously, you know, there's that bitterness is there. And uh, but he's also got his sense of honor and duty, uh, which sort of compels him sort of honor bound to come back. So, so the book is it's the first of a, you know, it's like an episodic series. The, the art goes across all five books. But in, in the first book, you know, it's his struggles about coming back. He's got to find his old crew. Um, if they're even still alive, it's 100 years later put together, put, you know, find his old ship and, you know, get everything back together in time to face this this enemy again. And can you tell us um, where the inspiration for the for the book and the series came from? What was the spark that led to this particular book? Yeah, so it was, it was two things, really. So I, I, I wanted to write a, a book about uh, an old soldier. Um, you know, I like that idea. Someone who someone who fought for a civilization, you know, this is a kind of interplanetary civilization, you know, put his life on the line and then, you know, in reward for his service, he was kind of forgotten about. So I liked the uh, the kind of conflict that created in the character, you know, dealing with his sort of bitterness and resentment, but also his sense of, of honor and duty. Um, but the the Attorney Wars series and the idea for the Eternians um came from the kind of thinking about the Neuralink chip. So Elon Musk's Neuralink chip. Um, and how we're at the beginning of kind of post-humanism now with implanting technology into our bodies, we can already get it, genes, things like that, and, and thinking about where that would lead. And I like the idea of having a, you know, a larger-than-life corporate billionaire, trillionaire, um, experimenting with human evolution. And in this series, that leads to the Eternians and the, and the leader of the Eternians uh, uh, who styles himself after the myths of ancient Egypt. This is book two. So you can see the God King, you know, Marcus Eternus is, you know, he's kind of thinks of himself as like a, a pharaoh. Mm. Um, so that was sort of a fun, fun element to sort of uh, bring in. And, and the series is kind of about, you know, how how post-human, how post-human society would might interact with, you know, regular flesh and blood humans. And, you know, there's a, the prejudice and fear, the unknown fear of technology you know, fear of where things, you know, like embedding technology into humans might go. Those are all sort of features of the of the series. And that's kind of, you know, played back into, into Carter Rose, the, the main character. Even though he's fighting against the Eternians, he's a he's post-human himself. So he argue, arguably has more in common with the enemy than he does with humanity. So there's lots of kind of moral quandaries and and drama that kind of comes around from from that element as well. So well, that that might actually um, be sort of relevant to my next question. So science fiction and fantasy often takes us to really unfamiliar sort of extraordinary worlds and people. And I wondered if you could just speak briefly about how you ground um, your novels in reality and make it sort of relatable for readers, even though we're not kind of bioengineered 
officers who have to go out and save the world ourselves. Um, so can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, well, so for, for me, for me, science fiction is they're, they're just, just stories about people and places and situations that just so happen to be in the future or in space or in spaceships. And to me, the, the science fiction is sort of secondary. You know, you could you could take the story and and put it in the in the very near future and it wouldn't really change. You'd have to change elements of it. You wouldn't have spaceships. You wouldn't necessarily have the Egyptian and, and, you know, inspired empire in quite the same way. But the conflicts and the and the stories are the same, and that that's that's the sort of science fiction I love. That's the sort of science fiction I sort of grew up reading. I've got one brought one actually to as an example. So this is Alfred Bester, um, Demolished Man, uh, one of my favourite books. This was written in the fifties, um, but it's still it's still sort of fresh and relevant sort of today because the, the stories are about about people and emotions, um, and I think that's. For me, that's what great science fiction is. It's they're just good stories. They just so happen to be set in somewhere fantastical. It's brilliant, amazing. Thank you so much for that. Congratulations again, and thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you.